Hi, and welcome to Calling Caffeinated. I'm Stacey Summerow, talking today about settling. Should I settle? Should I let go of my ideal? This is a really tough one, and it actually hits home for me recently because I think when we think of settling, we often think of relationships, but I also know that discernment applies to every area of our lives. And I recently just discerned a big life change, which was putting my oldest two children in school. I have four little children, my oldest is six, and I was homeschooling my first and sec, or my fifth, wow, I can't talk. I was homeschooling my six and my five-year-old in first grade, put them in first grade together. And then this fall, my littlest, I discussed this in a previous video, my littlest guy just stopped sleeping. He had chronic ear infections and I got so burned out. I wasn't sleeping. I have a special needs three-year-old who requires a lot of extra care and it just became so much that finally uh, right around Thanksgiving I just crashed and burned and I said to my husband I need a change I need more support we have to change direction and then what opened up it opened up this big can of worms because I had to admit to myself that I really needed extra support the system we had wasn't working but I noticed that I was confronting all of these mental blocks of letting go of homeschooling. There were so many things that I had been excited to do for homeschooling. Oh my gosh, we're building a house and I actually built it specifically to have a library where we could homeschool. We built a basement that we specifically want to homeschool, to invite our homeschool group to, to have homeschool field trips or dance classes or any other number of things, performances. So we're like building a house built for homeschooling. Meanwhile, I'm giving up on homeschooling and the mental battle was rather a burden this past December. And so I thought, you know, I bet other people are going through this too. This idea of letting go of my ideals and letting go in my life of this ideal of homeschooling in order to bring in something new and allow my children to go to school so that I can take care of myself which is a hard thing to do as a mom. So let's talk about some things you might wanna consider. The first question to ask yourself is, was that thing that I wanted an ideal because it's virtuous or because I'm a perfectionist? I've heard men say before, you know, I'm waiting for my spouse, you know, I want her to be just like the blessed mother. And I'm like, well, sorry to break it to you, but there's no sinless women walking on the earth right now. And if they did, God would probably want them for him instead of you. <laughs> no offense. So interspersed here, this may seem very random, but I just wanted to, for fun, show you a little bit about my process of making tallow lotion bars that I sell on the Catholic All Year Marketplace. They only have a few ingredients and they come out in the shape of the Blessed Mother. They have these really cool molds. So they, in these in these bars are... Um, beeswax, tallow, and shea butter. I don't know why that's so hard for me to remember. I'm really tired right now as I'm recording this. And then also lemon and lavender essential oils. So they're totally natural and they work like soap bars, except instead of being soap, they're actually lotion. So enjoy my process. And now back to our main topic. With, with relationships and with single people, uh, I do see a lot of confusion around waiting for a really good spouse but also not expecting perfection of them. And I actually did this episode called, Should I Have a List? Discerning whether or not you should have a list for your future spouse. And in that video, I talked about this idea of liability when you're taking on the liability of another person, you take on all their sins. And so of course you want the most perfect person possible so that you have as little liability that you're taking on as possible. But that's not how we're made, that's not, what we don't promise to be sinless when we take our wedding vows. And so if that's what we're waiting for and looking for, that has to be an ideal that we let go of because it is perfectionism. Um, and instead, what we should be seeking is virtue. We should be seeking the right thing in the right proportion. We talk about virtue a lot on my episode with Dr. Andrew Whitmore. I'll link that up here as well. We talked about seeking the proportionate good. And it has to be for the right time, at the right time, in the right circumstances, in the right measure. And so you need to kind of look at the entire picture of your life or whatever the circumstance is and ask, you know, is this a virtuous thing that I'm striving for? And if so, then absolutely do not, do not settle. Do not let go of that ideal. 
However, if it's perfectionism, you need to let go of that ideal. The second thing to pay attention to is the narrative in your head. Are you being motivated out of fear? Who would you be disappointing? In me, For me, in my life, I felt like I was scared to let go of homeschooling because I was scared of spending more money than we had budgeted for. Um, I was scared of the potential for a bad teacher for my children. I was scared of the potential that they might be bullied. Um, I was scared of looking flaky to other people. That's a huge one. It might make you want to commit to that first thing that you had said you wanted. When in reality, the real thing to do is to live in the present and to look and say, again, is this the proportional good for the situation? Or is my narrative holding me back? And so often that narrative is fear. You know, just fear of the unknown or fear of the worst case scenario. I have referred to this often, I think, but Marie Forleo has this great tactic. I've followed her for many years and she has this great tactic where she says, think about the worst case scenario and then plan your way out of it. Like how, if, if that actually happened, what would you do and how would you get yourself out of it? And then go from there. And uh, I think that's just brilliant because then it answers your questions. It allows you the freedom to just kind of dive in and live in the present. The next thing to ask yourself is, was there an expiration date that I missed? Are we past our expiration date with this thing or this relationship or this situation? For me, I actually looked at what our homeschooling year had looked like. I had all these ideals. I had all these beautiful field trips that I wanted to take, had all these great things I wanted to do. But in reality, I didn't do any of them. I think we took maybe one field trip the entire year because my one daughter's doctor appointments happened to fall on almost every field trip date. And then I, additionally, I was so tired from my chronic lack of sleep that getting out of the house was absolutely exhausting. So we ended up just kind of scraping by with very few social opportunities, uh, social interaction opportunities. We have lots going on in this area. I just couldn't take advantage of them because I was too tired. And so the ideal was there, it could be met, it just couldn't be met by me. And so I looked back and I said, you know what? We've been doing this all semester. It's not getting better. I'm still so burned out. There was an expiration date and the expiration date was a couple months ago and I missed it. And now it's time to make a change. St. Ignatius of Loyola has a description of consolation and desolation in his Rules for the Discernment of Spirits. And you can use this as kind of a quick tool to do a heart check and figure out some of your underlying motivations for these things. I think this is a great, a great thing. If you're thinking of a certain person, like I'm thinking back to this time when I was dating this guy who was really great, really great Catholic guy, had all the same ideals. I mean, we kind of even looked like each other. Like it was, there were a lot of things that would have lined up. He was a musician. Like there were a lot of great things um, about him that were very attractive to me. You know, we're, we would have both been musicians together, whatever. This guy, um, was my ideal in many ways. And, but then as I really thought about our relationship and how I felt when I was around him and how I acted when I was around him and how he acted towards me, I realized that I had a sense not of consolation when I thought about him and when we were actually together, but of desolation. I always felt like I had to put on a different side of myself. I felt like he wasn't really accepting. He was very critical of me. There were things about me that he want, wished were different. And instead of saying it, he kind of just insinuated things all the time. And so even though he was this ideal for me, it in reality, there was a, a deep sense of desolation there because I knew I wasn't really free to be myself around him in the way that I would need to be. And that kind of lay under the surface for a long time. Like it, it took a while to come out because I kept saying, no, no, this guy is so great. I can make this work. And then eventually I had to acknowledge that, you know what? I got to let go of this guy because it's just the reality on paper versus in person was very different. And um, yeah, you might find that in your relationships. It's like on paper, it looks so good. And in real life, it's just not jiving. So if you feel that sense of desolation, what it feels like is kind of a shrinking, like your mind is not thinking noble thoughts. You're thinking thoughts of fear, 
thoughts of self-condemnation or blaming others or resenting others. You feel this sense of um, shame, sense of wanting to hide. Whereas consolation is the exact opposite. Consolation is a sense of growth, a sense of forward movement, sense of excitement and hope. And that really comes from the Lord. I felt that in my relationship with my husband, there was an excitement and a sense of growth and a sense of, of purpose to our, our mission and our life together. Similarly, when I put my children in school, I felt such a sense of freedom, like it's not all on me anymore. Finally, what if I told you that you're free? Because you are, you're free. Free to make your own decision, free of fear. You have everything that you need. The Lord is there with you. The Lord wants good for you. And whatever ideal it is that you're discerning, whatever mind games you feel like you're getting wrapped up in, and I know the mind games, especially for single people, are real. <laughs> and the mind games for me as a homeschooling mom have been real too because there's so much guilt that can flood right in when you're a mom. There's so much guilt. So you're fr just remember you're free, you know, and the Lord is with you. I just remind you of Exodus 14, 14. The Lord will fight for you. You need only to be still. He is <clears throat> with you through your difficult decisions and know my prayers for you. God bless you.